In this video, I'm taking you through 25 different open source intelligence tools, telling you what they are, showing you what they look like, and telling you if they're worth it or not. Coming up. Welcome to the channel. Open source intelligence is publicly available information on people, businesses, networks, domains, etc. that is widely available if you know how to find it, right? And there's a bunch of tools out there, uh, mostly developed on the offensive side of the house to help you uh, find it quickly, aggregate it, correlate it, make use of it, etc. So that's what we're doing this episode. Uh, LinkedIn posts the other day had the top 25 open source intelligence tools and I liked it. And I was like, hey, there's a couple on there that I've never heard of. I want to know more about it. So I'm going to run through all 25. I'm going to show you exactly what they look like. I'm going to tell you what my thoughts are and you know if if they're absolutely you know staples of the industry i'm going to tell you that and if they're not we're not going to do that if you're new here this is simply cyber the youtube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further faster and on this channel we talk to experts and we do uh tools and, and trainings and labs just like today so that's interesting hit subscribe be sure to stay tuned as i'm doing a bunch of osint stuff in the month of june and next week we're going to be interviewing joe gray who's a professional OSINT expert and just a really, really great person who's going to bring his knowledge and expertise on using open source intelligence. So this week, learn the tools. Next week, uh, learn how to really practically use them in a pen testing kind of engagement. So let's get to the list. Oh, and check out the chapters below if you want to jump to a specific tool, but let's just run through the list, okay? The first item on the list is the OSINT framework. This framework is focused on gathering information from free tools or resources, and the intention is to help people find free OSINT resources. It's developed by Justin Nordine, and this is a really great place to start because it's comprehensive, it has all of the different types of open source intelligence, and links you to tools and resources that you can use to find that specific type of information. The second one on the list is the check usernames website. Now, this allows you to check the use of your brand or username on 160 social networks. And really the benefit here is if you're targeting an individual and you know what their online social handle is, you could put it in here and find other sites that they have registered potentially with that username and handle and then begin to kind of develop more of a profile on that person. You know, maybe they just have their Twitter handle that you know, but they actually have a Flickr account and then you can get access to some pictures and use tools later on to extract metadata. Um, it's fine, it's a fine tool. Uh, number three, have I been pwned? Now this one is a classic. Have I been pwned allows you to put in an email address and see if it's been involved in a data breach. Uh, Troy Hunt runs this, this site is great. I suggest you put your own email address in there, and as a bonus, you can um, you can find out if your target has been involved in a breach, and if they have which breaches, and then you could go find that breach data and possibly get their uh, their password that hopefully has been changed, but maybe not. So you can do that. The fourth one is been verified. Now this one allows you to uh, find, you know, they say unlimited people, vehicle, property, and contact info. I will tell you, I went through this uh, process just to see what I could pull up and then I hit a paywall at the end. So I wouldn't recommend using Have I Been Verified unless you're gonna be a professional and be able to charge uh, back to a client or something like that. It looks like a great, you know, massive set of data, uh, but at the same time, I wasn't able to check it because it, was, it wasn't free and I'm all about the free. The next one is Census. Now, Census was new to me and it appears to kind of be like Shodan where you can put in an IP, a domain, a host, anything of specific and it will reach out and uh, pull what it is crawled off the internet and show you what it's found. There was some really great information in there. Uh, I would recommend trying it. I plan on bookmarking it, but Shodan's kind of my go-to with that one. Number six is Built With. Now, Built With is a website profiler, lead generation, competitive analysis, and business intelligence tool that provides technology adoption, e-commerce data, and usage analytics for the internet. The way that cybersecurity professionals would want to use this is you scan a site, say you're doing web application pen testing, scan that site, see what kind of stack, tech stack they got underneath it. Um, perhaps you can find vulnerabilities with that, or you could socially engineer administrators because you know what the tech stack is, etc. So it's very useful for seeing kind of what the web platform is built on, especially in today's day where web applications are quite complicated. Number seven is Google Dorks. Now, Google Dorks isn't actually a site or a tool or anything like that. It's really a collection of 
queries that you can use on Google uh, with certain operators to extract particular information. So you can find, you know, you could, you could um, search on a particular client domain and file type PDF just to find PDF files that have been um, culled by Google or, um, you know, password, username, uh, maybe what tech stack they're on, et cetera, like that. So I definitely recommend you do Google Dorks. That's an entire uh, video all to itself, though, but definitely check that out. Number eight is Maltigo. Now, Maltigo is an open source intelligence and graphical link analysis tool for gathering and connecting information for investigative tasks. Now, I will tell you, I have used Maltigo in the past, and I have always found it very difficult and overwhelming. I've never successfully used it um, in any particular way. Now, if you have a particular target, like a person that you're trying to identify. The cool thing with Maltigo is they have these things called like uh, trans transposes or something. And, and basically you can click on someone and, and pivot um, into other uh, areas. Like it's like API calls and modules that you have to bring into Maltigo. So if you do get it going, it is incredibly cool and incredibly powerful. Like I said, I've tried it a couple times and never really had much success with it, but it's been around for a while and it's definitely well uh, respected in the community. Number number nine. Number nine is a classic, and if you're gonna take one tool from this list and get to know it, Recon NG is the tool. This tool is used by every single professional offensive security person in one way or another. It allows you to enumerate uh, targets, investigate targets, get intelligence from targets. It is a powerhouse tool and I would strongly encourage you to check it out. It's a command line tool. It comes stock with your Kali Linux builds. Uh, great, great tool and definitely recommend checking it out. The next one on the list, number 10, is the Harvester. The Harvester is a very simple to use yet powerful and effective tool designed to be used in the early stages of a penetration test or red team engagement. And you can use it for open source intelligence gathering to help determine a company's external threat landscape on the internet. The tool gathers emails, names, subdomains, IPs, and URLs using multiple public data sources. This is another great, great tool that a lot of professional pen testers, red teamers, offensive side of the house people use standard. It comes pre-canned with every Cali bill, usually. So definitely get to know the harvester. Number 11, Shodan. Uh, Shodan, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's a go-to. It crawls the internet and it collects, you know, basically what is at the end of all those IP addresses. It, it takes screenshots if it's possible. You can find ports. You can circle in on areas, uh, geolocation areas, uh, webcams, etc. Shodan is awesome. There's been a ton, a ton of papers and talks on Shodan, so I won't exhaust it here. But if you don't know about Shodan, you need to know about Shodan because it's a standard in the information security industry. Number 12 on their list, Jigsaw. Okay, so here's the first major fail on the list, okay? I tried to figure out what Jigsaw was. It, they claim to be used to gather information about any company's employees and typically better suited for large companies like Google, IBM, Apple, etc. cetera. Uh, I couldn't find this tool. Everything I found to link to some company that did information security, so I don't know if it's proprietary, but Jigsaw, off my list. Number 13. Spiderfoot. Now, Spiderfoot is one that I hadn't heard of before, but it's basically supposed to save you time by automating the collection and surfacing of interesting OSINT. Um, I, there was a front end piece to it. You can see that I had a command line interface and some interesting commands and stuff. I wasn't able to really use it in any meaningful way, so I don't know if it's good or not. Uh, I, I offer you to check it out and uh, see for yourself, but uh, I had never heard of it before, so you know your mileage may vary on that one. Number 14 is Creepy. Creepy is a geolocation OSINT tool offering geolocation information gathering through social networking platforms. This is another one. I believe Creepy has been an abandoned project. I think the lead developer has archived it off. I tried to download a executable GUI for my Mac OS and it didn't really work. The APIs were all busted. Um, there was a command line thing. I didn't get that to work. So Creepy is off the list as far as a useful tool because I think it's been an abandoned project. Really, really cool though. It basically had like pins everywhere on where people were and where they were posting. So obviously well-named app, creepy, right? The next one is uh, Nmap, number 15. So you wanna talk about another OG information security tool? Nmap is like the first tool everybody cuts their teeth on, I swear to God. 
like NMAP stands for Network Mapper. It's been around forever. Um, it's a free and open source utility for network discovery and security auditing. Many systems and network administrators find it useful for tasks such as network inventory, managing service upgrades, monitoring host or service uptime. So it's not just an information security tool, but you can use it to, as an information security practitioner, to scan um, a host and see what ports are open, maybe fingerprint their operating system and their listening apps, right? So you can use it to really do heavy reconnaissance on targets. I'm telling you, NMAP is standard standard order process for anybody working in information security, good or bad, or uh, offensive or defensive. Sorry, I'm not calling the offensive people uh, bad guys. So, uh, number 16, WebShag. All right, here's another one where um, I believe this one's been abandoned, but WebShag is a multi-threaded and multi-platform web server audit tool written in Python, and it gathers commonly useful functionality for web server auditing, like website crawling, URL scanning, or file fuzzing. Everything I did try to find it didn't work. Tried to run, tried to like compile and stuff, it didn't work. So I think that this project has been abandoned and it should be removed from this top 25 list, but it seemed really promising and cool based on the write up. Number 17, OpenVAS. OpenVAS is basically a vulnerability management or vulnerability scanner, right? So there's a big couple big ones in the industry Rapid 7s, Nexpos, um, Nessus, Tenable, uh, Qualys. There's a couple big ones. This is supposed to be a free open source one that you can compile yourself. I've never been able to successfully run it. I've heard horror stories of people trying to run it. So it's a cool idea and concept, but basically if you're gonna want a vulnerability scanner, my recommendation is go to Nessus, download their, their free evaluation one, which allows you to scan like 16 IPs or something like that. You can play with it and get a feel for it. Uh, I wouldn't bother trying to compile and, and, and roll your own open vase. Number 18 is Fierce. Fierce is a command line tool, and I hadn't heard of it before, but it's a semi-lightweight scanner that helps locate non-contiguous IP space and host names against specified domains. And it's really meant as a precursor to NMAP, Unicorn Scan, Nessus, scanners, etc. It doesn't perform exploitation, and it doesn't scan the whole internet indiscriminately. It's meant specifically to locate likely targets both inside and outside of a corporate network. So Fierce is pretty cool. I ran it on Simply Cyber. Uh, .io, it kind of worked, right? I don't know this good or bad. I've never heard anyone talk about it, but the tool does work right now. So uh, kind of worth checking out if uh, that appeals to you. Number 19 is Unicorn Scan. Now I have heard of Unicorn Scan and I've heard about it for years and years and years. I believe that the project is actually abandoned at this point. Uh, it's supposed to be an information gathering and correlation engine built for and by its members of the security research and testing community. It's supposed to be scalable, accurate, uh, flexible and efficient. I found it to be not working. So, you know, there's so many good scanners. Again, see NMAP, right? That I don't really worry about Unicorn Scan, but just know that it wasn't working. So there's that one. Number 20 is FOCA or FOCA. FOCA is a tool used mainly to find metadata and hidden information in the documents it scans. These documents may be on web pages, can be downloaded and analyzed with FOCA. It's capable of analyzing a wide variety of documents with the most common being Microsoft Office, OpenOffice, PDFs, Adobe, SVG files, etc. So I found FOCA to be kind of cool. I wasn't able to successfully use it. It looks like it only runs on Windows workstations, which I do not have. Um, so you know, give it a shot yourself, put it in the comments if you do run it. It seems cool. Basically, uh, documents just like pictures have a lot of metadata, like who com who wrote it, who published it, where was it, geolocation, you know, what apps were used to create it, all that crap. So it sounds like this tool is designed to extract that from files that you're able to pull off of, uh, you know, again, use Google Dorks on a domain, pull out file types, then use this tool to basically extract metadata in a cool way, right? A lot of these tools you could do, you know, manually, but they, they make it faster and more automated. Okay, number 21 is Zoomai. Now this one was probably the most surprising on the list for me because this tool is really feature rich and super awesome. Okay, it's much like Census and Shodan that we covered already, but this one seems to be focused on either on China or it's it's based out of China. There was definitely a heavy Chinese influence to it. I put in some queries, it pulled up some really interesting information, more information than Shodan really pulls up. Uh, so I might actually switch to using Zoomai more often uh, than Shodan when I'm doing demonstrations and stuff like that. It, I didn't see screenshots, which is something cool that Shodan has that when you're doing a demo, uh, it's always visual eye candy for people. Continuously scans and identifies multiple service ports and protocols 24 hours a day. This thing is just constantly the eye of Sauron scanning 
the network or the internet, pulling back relevant data for you to query. So super, super powerful database on the back end. And I found the queries to be snappy, uh, meaning that they came back fairly quickly and fairly good information. So definitely check out Zoomai. Number 22 is Spicy. Now Spicy was new to me as well, so I'm really uh, happy that I encountered it, but it basically has records about the internet connected assets available for search and download. What does that mean? It basically allows you to kind of like show it and kind of like Zoomai, like you can put in different information um, that may have been kind of um, documented and recorded by the Spicy's back end, and you can pull information. So again, if you're looking at Shodan Census Zoom I, consider Spicy and throw in some information. It did look like Spicy was like uh, free to use, like you get five results, and if you pay, you get more. With tools like Shodan Zoom I and Census, I don't really think, wh why would you pay for it? Um, so, but whatever, it's worth checking out. Um, number 23 is IVRE, which is another one I hadn't heard of. Uh, it's an open source framework for network recon. It relies on open source well-known tools like Nmap, Mascan, et cetera, to gather data and network intelligence, stores it in a database, and provides a tool to analyze it. So I found this really cool. There was a, a command line interface for it. I did get that working. Uh, I didn't really, I wasn't able to really pull any information or interesting information. Um, I think I ran the uh, like a, a, a default query that they provide. I mean, I mean, it's okay. It, it was, it was okay, right? I, I probably won't use it. I probably won't remember it, to be honest with you. But whatever. Uh, number twenty-four was meta, meta goofful, meta goofil. Okay, so like exfiltration and metadata, right? So that's basically what this is. Uh, it's a very powerful OSINT information gathering tool developed by Edge Security. Uh, it's used to extract metadata from the target. It supports various file types, including PDF, XLS, PowerPoint, etc. And it can be used to extract MAC addresses from the files, given that the attacker a fair idea of what kind of hardware is being used by the victim or the target, right? So this one's cool. Again, I ran a demo uh, like on apple.com um, and pulled some files back. You can see that that's pulling it there. Uh, I didn't do the further analysis of it, but again, this tool is just automating something that would have been manually intensive to collect a bunch of information on a target um, domain or a target you know, not victim, but like a target client, extract the data from it and start building a picture. Again, this is all about open source intelligence. This is all about reconnaissance. Finally, the final tool, and I wish this was like a big bang kind of finish tool, but it's not, is XIF tool. Okay, so XIF tool is a platform independent Perl library plus a command line app for reading, writing, and editing meta, meta information in a wide variety of files. Here's the thing, Exif tool, the website looked cool. It supported like a million different file types. I think this is an abandoned program. I tried, uh, you know, working with it, didn't really work. Um, I tried to download uh, some command line stuff from it, that failed. So I think that this tool is abandoned. I'm gonna uh, mark it as an X, N not, not good uh, for this list, okay? Okay, so that is our list of 25 reviewed. Obviously, Recon, NG, and Nmap are OG original beasts that everybody uses in the industry. We got a couple good ones in there, a couple new ones like Zoomai I hadn't heard of, uh, Census I had heard of, but I had forgotten about, and you know, really that OSINT framework at the beginning that lays everything out. Uh, if you're new to OSINT, check out some of these tools, play with them. Again, you're not really uh, committing any crimes or violating anything if it's public information, right? Logging into something, that's a problem. But anything that's publicly available is public uh, information, so check that out. Again, thank you for your time. I love doing the show. We got a bunch of OSINT stuff coming up. Like I mentioned, we're going to be interviewing Joe Gray, and I'll be showing you how to build your own Raspberry Pi Trace Labs VM, which is a VM or a it's a it's a system that's completely tailored for open source intelligence and tracking down missing persons. I'll be doing that in later in the month. All right. So until next time, stay tuned.